Hello and welcome everyone to Sharp Knife Shops Versus series, the YouTube series where I, Gage, compare two different styles of knives from the Japanese knife world in the hopes that it will help you decide which is right for you. In today's video, we're comparing the Yanagiba to the Tsujihiki. Let's get into it. Before we get started, it's important to note that we are filming this video in the context of you being a Western style chef uh, or cook and not a professional sushi chef. That's gonna slightly skew the way we compare knives if we were to do it for a professional sushi chef as opposed to a Western style cook. So just keep that in mind. Before we get into it, we're going to briefly describe the anatomy of the Yanagiba. Uh, chances are you may come across some terms that you've never heard before with the Yanagiba, whereas with the Sujihiki, we're probably not gonna use any words you've never Ever heard before. So let's get into it. On the uh, front side of the knife, we have the Hira and we have the Kiriha. Separating these two is the Shinogi line. The Hira is going to be the flat part of the blade here. The Kiriha is going to be the bevel or where the knife begins to angle in towards the cutting edge. And the Shinogi line is going to separate the two. Last term to know on the front side of the knife is the koba, and this could be described as the primary cutting edge uh, or the micro bevel on a double beveled knife. It is the final angle that they put on the very cutting edge of the knife. Moving on to the back side of the blade, we have two terms to know here, the uraoshi, which is the perimeter of the back side of the knife, and the urasuki, which is the concave part of the back side of the knife. We also here will find the Hagane or the hard core steel. And on the front side, typically where the Hira is, you'll find the Jigane, which is the softer cladding. If you're looking for a new Yanagiba, a good way to know if it is a quality piece is to make note of how the Shinogi line and the bevel match each other. They should be basically parallel to one another. So if you see some variance in how the uh, profile of the knife uh, curves and how the Shinogi line curves, uh, there may be some other issues with the knife. Now, like we said, you probably are familiar with the Sujihiki being sort of very similar to a Gyuto or another double beveled Japanese knife. The only real difference here is it's gonna be a, have a little shorter blade height and it's typically gonna be a little bit longer. And this again is so that you can make those long drawing strokes, which are really beneficial when you're slicing. So without further ado, let's start comparing these two knives. We're gonna start by comparing their ease of use. So the edge for the ease of use we're going to give to the Sujihiki. This largely has to do with the fact that the Sujihiki is double beveled, whereas the Yanagiba is single beveled. If you've never used a single beveled knife before, it will have a tendency to sort of steer as you cut through things. And what we mean by steering is the knife will actually want to sort of go towards the side of the bevels. When you're cutting softer ingredients like raw fish, it's not as noticeable, but when you're cutting harder ingredients, maybe like vegetables or something like that, you'll notice it even more. If you've never used a single beveled knife, there is going to be uh, a little bit of getting used to it. Um, but once you do get used to it, it's, uh, it's not so bad. The Sujihiki being double beveled is going to be like anything you've used before. It's not gonna steer on you or anything. It's gonna cut right where you tell it to cut provided it is sharp. Um, so for that reason, we're giving the ease of use uh, to the Sujihiki. Category number two is the ease of sharpening slash maintenance. And for this category, we have to give it to the Sujihiki. Once again, more to do with the difficulties with sharpening and maintaining a Yanagiba, more so than how easy it is to sharpen or maintain a Sujihiki. What we mean by that is chances are, and now this isn't always the case, but typically a Yanagiba is going to be made from carbon steel and have an iron cladding on it. Both of these materials will rust quite easily, uh, especially if you go with a shirogami or white carbon steel, you're gonna find that it discolors and rusts quite quickly. So you're gonna have to be really on top of keeping this guide wiped down dry and clean. Now, pertaining to the sharpening portion of this category, if you've never sharpened a single beveled knife, there is going to be a pretty substantial learning curve to, to sharpening a single beveled knife for the first time. Whereas a sujihiki being double beveled is probably much like sharpening anything else that you own. We should note though, that once you get your Yanni in a good place in terms of its sharpening, you've you've uh, you've zeroed out the bevel on your knife, Ura is looking really nice. It should be very, very easy to touch this guy up and get it razor, razor sharp again. But that comes with a level of skill uh, and experience that not everyone has. So if you're looking for an easy to maintain and easy to sharpen knife, uh, we have to give the edge to the Suji. 
Category number three is the slicing performance category that we have to give the edge to the Yanagiba 4. This is because single beveled knives just get sharper in general. Um, I don't know the science behind it, but when you use a properly sharpened single beveled knife, it is like nothing else. And this is really gonna help with slicing raw proteins. And that's big part of the reason why when you walk into any sushi restaurant, uh, they're typically all using single beveled yanagibas. When you slice a, pro a, a raw protein with a yanagiba and your knife is sharp, everything's good, you're gonna get that nice glassy finish to the slice that you've, uh, you've just sliced. Um, and they still perform really, really well at the, at the cooked proteins as well. Another note is the precision that you can take with a uh, Yanagiba. Again, this kind of goes along with how sharp you can get them, but you can also line up the ura when you're looking down at the knife and you know exactly where the edge of your knife is going to be, helping you be more precise. Another point to add here is the weight of the knives. So uh, you'll notice on the Yenagiba here, we've got a really thick spine and on the Sujihiki, we've got a really thin spine. This is obviously gonna make the Yeni much heavier and this is going to allow the knife to really do a lot of the work for you. You're not even gonna have to apply any pressure down, more so just think about drawing the knife toward or away from you and the weight of the knife will just help it fall through ingredients. The Sujihiki, you're not gonna quite get that feeling because it's so light you will have to apply a little bit of pressure on your own. Sucks to be you. Category number four is value. And we need to give the edge to the Sujihiki in this category. Now, what we mean by value is how much you pay for the knife and how much performance you get for your money. For comparing a $200 Sujihiki next to a $200 Yanagiba, the Sujihiki is more than likely going to outperform the Yanagiba at that price. Let's say, for instance, we're comparing a $700 Sujihiki to a $700 Yanagiba. I can't say for sure, but I can almost guarantee that the Yanagiba is going to outperform the $700 Sujihiki. Now, this has a lot to do with the uh, expertise involved in making a single beveled knife. When you're down at that $200 level, uh, a lot of corners are going to be cut, not enough time is going to be spent on making that knife. Uh, so you're not going to end up with something that's awesome right out of the box. You could spend a lot of hours fixing it up yourself and get that knife to a point where it performs just like that $800 Yanagiba, uh, but you have to take into account how much time that's gonna take you. Chances are it's gonna be in the 10 to 20 hour range to, to, to sharpen and, and re form that knife into what it should be. Whereas when you buy a $200 Sujihiki, it's gonna be ready to slice right out of the box. Another good point to make here is the material used for those uh, lower priced knives. Chances are that that Yanni at $200 is gonna be made from a steel, maybe a good steel, but maybe one that hasn't been heat treated very well. So you may spend that 10, 20 hours fixing it up, making it all nice, uh, but because it hasn't been heat treated properly, you're not gonna get the edge retention and the cutting performance out of it that you would from that, that same $200 Sujihiki. You could have spent that 10 or 20 hours um, working and making money uh, to buy the more expensive Yanagiba that's made from beautiful steel and heat treated properly. Again, for that reason, we have to give the value uh, category to the Sujihiki. Category number five is versatility, and we're going to come to a draw on this category. That's because there's many things that are much easier to do with a uh, Yanagiba and certain things that are much easier to do with a Sujihiki. Off the top of my head, I can think of like slicing raw proteins and sheeting daikon with a Yanagiba is gonna be much easier than with a Sujihiki. And on the other side of things, uh, like breaking down a whole fish or taking the silver skin off of a tender loin, for instance, can be much easier with the Sujihiki. Uh, we found that like, especially that silver skin example, try to do that with the Yanagiba, it's just going to cut right through the silver skin every time. Uh, whereas the Sujihiki is going to do what you want it to, which is separate the meat and the silver skin really easily. So um, for those reasons, uh, again, we're giving a tie for versatility. Last category is the coolness factor, category number six, and obviously it goes to the Yanagiba. If you disagree here, you are wrong. Everybody who gets into Japanese knives eventually wants to scratch that single beveled itch, and a Yanagiba is a great way to do that. I would argue if, you know, the classic three single beveled shapes in the Japanese world are going to be the Deba, the Asuba, 
and the Yenigiba. A Deba, I personally don't enjoy using too much, and an Asuba, I really don't enjoy using. So if I had to, to add a single beveled uh, knife into my kit, it would be easy for me to add in a Yenigiba. Like we've kind of talked about, there's a lot of things you can use these for, even in a Western style kitchen, um, and they are just so freaking cool. Uh, something about that single bevel uh, look to the knife just makes it look so badass. And it's not to say that you won't find really cool Sujihikis as well, um, but they're just, you know, they're, they, you know, they are, they're Sujihikis. They're like, they're double beveled, you know, they're cool. They might have a nice finish on it, but there's just, again, something about that single beveled look. So again, um, no arguing here. Coolness factor goes to the Yenigiba. So there you have it guys, our six categories brings us to a final tally of four for the Sujihiki and three for the Yanagiba. But it really all depends on what your uh, intended use for the knife is, what your skill level is in terms of knife sharpening and maintenance. And it really comes down to whether or not you're a home cook that's just looking for a versatile, easy to use, easy to main maintain knife, which would be the Sujihiki, or if you're a knife nerd looking for coolness factor and performance over everything, which you got to go with the Yanagiba. I hope you enjoyed this video. If we uh, got anything wrong, which I'm sure we did, leave a comment down below. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel for more knife related content. And until the next one, stay sharp.